We are so excited to have you guys with us. Uh, it's been a year since we've been in the theater doing the cafe plays. And it's, uh, we're fortunate that we still have you guys tuning in and fortunate that we have so many actors and artists that want to work with us. So we're super excited for this evening. The theme was, hey, Amy Ruskin. The theme this evening was, I can't quit you. Uh, the writers had four hours to write based off the headshot that they had, and the actors had five hours to rehearse. And we have four pieces for you this evening. Our plan is to be doing this every third Sunday of the month from here on out. And we're really looking forward to getting back into the theater with you. We think it's going to be soon. Uh, people are getting vaccinated, and uh, we are working on reopening plans and other things with the city. So we look forward to hopefully serving you for many years to come. And without further ado, the first play is The Morning After. And Steve Mazur, can you turn your camera on, please? Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Steve Mazur wrote The Morning After. It was directed by myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike. And it stars John Colella, who is acting in Hollywood, California and Jim Roof, who is acting in North Carolina. Uh, many of you remember uh, Jim Roof from many of some of the Ruskin's greatest shows with John Colella. Um, so we're super stoked that Jim is doing this three hours ahead. And once again, this is all live. Uh, for your best viewing experience, I recommend that you watch it in gallery view um, so that you only see the two actors that are up in front of you. And without further ado, the Morning After by Steve Mazur, starring John Colella and Jim Roof. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh God, I made it. Oh God, it's a miracle. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm asleep. No sleep. Oh. No. They may be coming. Focus. Focus. Okay. You gotta delete everything. Okay. Emails, tweets, uh, Twitter, uh, parlor. Oh God. Oh God, parlor. What's this? Oh, hey, hey, it's you. It's you. Don't shoot! I, I, I'll, I'll surrender. I'll surrender a little peacefully. Whoa, 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 he's in there, he's in there, pal. I ain't the Popo. -po. I ain't the Popo. -po. It's me, it's Carl. Carl? Huh? How? Where? Where? Oh, there you are. Yeah, we, we resume it right before we left, remember? Wow, we must have left our cameras on. Oh. Did you just get back now? Yeah, yeah. After we split up outside of Alexandria, you know, I, I figured I should just stay clear of every major highway and city. I only use back roads. Yeah, same here, same here. Well, I headed south first. So I, I figured I'd blend in better. <sighs> Finally got back yesterday. <sighs> How did all this happen, man? How did it all come to, 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 to this? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I really, really don't know. One minute, I'm at home. I'm popping a beer, getting ready to watch me some Lou Dobbs. Next thing I know, I'm speeding across the country with you to storm the Capitol. Oh, shh, that's so loud, man. If they hurt you, right, it could be used against us in a court of law. What are we thinking? Coming to come from Encino, for God's sake. I know. I know. I mean, I went from running a cheese shop in Sherman Oaks to hunting the halls of Congress for Mike Pence. I mean, Mike Pence. Are you right? Four years. Four years. I don't give that guy a second thought. All of a sudden, I'm part of a mob that wants to, wants to go out and string this guy up. I think it's a bad dream. Or, or you know, or, or a hallucination. Like from that one time I took shrooms in college. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to trying to wake myself up. You know, just seeing maybe this is a dream. Ah. Well, hey, 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 
we were hypnotized. What? Yeah, maybe we were all like hypnotized or, you know, just sort of sort of lulled into this, this mass hallucination. By Lou Dobbs? Or Hannity? Or Giuliani? I, mean, I don't know, one of those guys? Maybe it was like, you know, like a, a kind of temporary insanity. For four years. Okay, a long-term insanity. Hannity insanity. I mean, how else would you explain it? I can't! Oh, God. I mean, Donald Trump? Seriously? It's a reality TV guy. All of a sudden, well, I'm, I'm ready to kill for this guy? I don't even like The Apprentice. Uh, me either. Terrible show. You're fired. It's, it's so lame. On the other hand, that could be pretty funny. Yeah, but so could the Three Stooges, you know? I'm not going to help to get them elected president. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although that would be hilarious. Actually, the kind of would. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> it's not quite as funny, you know, after four years. How could we be just, just so stupid for so long? And just keep getting stupider and stupider. Uh, now, stupider and stupider? <clears throat> oh, shit! Oh, shit! I know, I know, I know. How could you, man? What were you thinking? Well, obviously I wasn't thinking at all. I guess it's just, you know, after I got the first one, I figured, what the hell? The first one? <sighs> okay. I'm gonna have to wear a hat the rest of my life. Do you think, do you think we're gonna get arrested? Well, I, you know, I think the fact that they haven't confiscated our computers is a good sign. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that all that face paint I wore is going to make it harder to identify me. Yeah, yeah, and I got turned around first thing, so I spent most of the riot in the congressional cafeteria. You know, I, I wasn't even near any of the really, the really heavy stuff. Well, so, so maybe we'll get away with it. Yeah, 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 maybe we will. Still on us, though. Yeah. Still on us. I mean, yeah. Well, Trump fed us a lot of BS. But let's face it, man. We were hungry for it. We, we were so happy just to gobble it all up. Yeah, man, we just couldn't get enough of it. So, I mean, what turned an accountant and a tea shop operator into insurrectionists. I mean, God, what, what made us willing to riot for, you know, a person like Donald Trump? I don't know. I do not know. I do know. We gotta figure this out. Because I don't, it's likely to happen again. Oh shit. Oh shit, it's the feds. Oh God, oh God, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What, what, what can I do? What can I do? I have to turn myself in. Look, 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 you just take off now, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just try to cover a few as long as I can. <laughs> oh, false alarm. It was just my new neighbor. He was coming over to introduce himself. <laughs> Some guy named Omar. Omar.
that wall. Build 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 that wall. All right, that was The Morning After by Steve Mazur and directed by myself and starring John Colella and Jim Roof. And now the next play is I'm Still Gonna Have to Charge You for a Full Session, written by Joe Galliani. Joe, please turn your camera on. And it was directed by Michael Schwartz. Say hello, Michael Schwartz. Come on on for everybody. Thank you two for doing this. And it stars Vicki Ilk and Chloe Cromwell. And now without further ado, I'm still gonna have to charge you for a full session. Enjoy. Hi, Vicki. Are you all right? Is this an emergency? We don't have an appointment or a session until tomorrow afternoon. Oh, I no, have no. another client in about 15 minutes. No, no, no. Everything's okay. I, I'm actually really, really okay. Um, I just have to run like a, a major life decision by you. It'll only take five minutes. I'm sorry to just come at you out of the blue like this. Well, this is really not okay. But you've never done this before, so I can see you're in need. It's okay. Oh, I totally am. Just five minutes and then I got to go. Okay, fine. But I will have to charge you for the full session. Okay, I understand. No problem. So what's going on? Ooh, okay, I am going on a hiking date with Rolando. <laughs> I... I just, I want to tell him how I feel about him. I got to see him in person. Uh oh, this does not sound very rational or very well thought out. Uh, not true. It's literally all I think about. Well, we've talked about this for months, Vicky. We really have. And I thought that we came to recognize that this is a, a harmless and, and healthy COVID crush. You know, as long as you are as long as you're being mindful and you do not act out. Well, but I want to act out. I want to be out. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm just driving myself crazy by, by being so mindful. It's driving me out of my mind, literally. But what is going on today that it's driving this urgency? Vicky, this is really not like you. Okay. But I don't want to be like me right now. Okay, what's going on is, so I saw on his Facebook page that he's going to Malibu Creek Canyon Park for him to hike up to the waterfall. So you're going to go and ambush him there? Yeah, exactly. So he's bringing his um, little bulldog, his name's Caesar. And so he's bringing him with him and I, you know, have a little pocket full of his favorite snacks. Well, this is starting to look like a questionable plan. Vicki, do you think that we can do this tomorrow in our session? Can this wait? No, no, no. I have to leave in three minutes if I'm going. Oh. Am I going? Sure. I mean, why not? What could possibly go wrong? I'm certain that it's all going to turn out exactly as you visualized it. Right? Right. Right. Uh, you know, I just have to go and take my shot when it's right in front of me, don't I? Look, <clears throat> even if this was a good idea, which is highly debatable, <sighs> you will not be getting vaccinated for a very long time, for quite a few months. And you won't be able to be around him without a mask to be uh, able to do this. I do not care. Okay, what if this virus just keeps mutating and mutating, and then we never go back to the things, the way things were again. I mean, I just can't wait the rest of eternity living my rest of my life with Harold in this apartment. I understand your COVID fatigue. Believe me, I do, but don't you think that your husband, he deserves 
some sort of truth and honesty and and and, and transparency uh, after three years. No, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, he has been driving me crazy for the last twelve months with his Zoom whiskey happy hours and his never-ending Call of Duty sessions with his brothers in arms. Yes, but your infatuation with a twenty-two-year-old. He is somebody that you don't even really know oh, anything about. Nobody would even talk about the age difference if I were 22 and he were 32. It is such patriarchal bullshit. Maybe so, but you've known Rolando for 10 months from your online book club. Yeah, but I also see his Facebook and his Instagram and his Twitter and his TikTok videos, oh my God. I mean, I see him every day and he's brilliant and beautiful and funny, Rolando. Yes, he is. Everything Harold is not. He's also Afro-Cuban and completely from a different culture, different history, everything different from you, whole lifestyle. Yes, that's one of the things I love about him. It's a Black Lives Matter book club. He knows how much I care. He knows that I'm woke. Well, there's woke and there's woke. I, I just don't want you blowing up your life on like so impulsively. There are consequences if we don't look at the big picture. Oh my God, I don't care about the consequences. I, I don't even care about the big picture. I just want to feel alive. And I want to jump out of the bed in the morning just as soon as my eyes are open and feel, oh my God, I want to feel this love buzz that I'm feeling right now. <sighs> well, I just don't know why you called me, Vicky. I mean, your mind, it seems clearly already made up. I mean, I, did you just call me to ask for my permission? That's what it sounds like. No, I, I don't think so. Wait. Not everybody has the perfect marriage and home situation that you do, Chloe. I mean, your husband is just- My husband? Crazy. My husband? My family is completely out of bounds in this relationship. Not for a second. You have no goddamn right to speak about that. Yeah, you're, you're right. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. I, I, I apologize. Well, it's very nice that somebody can say that to me instead of always telling me that I am full of and not knowing anything that I'm talking about. Oh my God, I never said that, really. I treasure your advice. That's why I called you. Believe me, you are not the only one that's going through this, having to spend 24-7 with your spouse. You know, our relationships, they are not made for this, not yours and sure as hell is not mine. No, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. Oh my God, I'm so all sorry. Of my sessions from, you know, in here, in the house with him in the living room, just listening, listening in and always giving me all this little tiny advice about how I should have said this better. Oh my God, do you have any idea how many times I've wanted to strangle him? Um, I don't really know. He's supposed to be doing. writing a book. Instead, he spends his whole day creating memes and not one of them is funny. Not one will ever go viral. Not um, one of them. Um, I think, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call this off and stay Oh here. no, hell you don't. No one can blame you. No one can blame you for wanting to go. Nobody, nobody, because sometimes just sometimes you just have to say, fuck this, and you just have to go for it. <laughs> wow, you really think so? But I have to think- But nothing, about nothing. You go, girl, and you come back tomorrow, and at our session, you tell me all about it, and I wanna see pictures. You got that? Okay. Oh, that's my new, new patient, I gotta go. Viva Rolando. Rolando!
All right, that was, I'm still gonna have to charge you for a full session. Written by Joe Galliani, directed by Michael Schwartz, starring Vicki Elk and Chloe Cromwell. And now our next cafe play for the evening, our virtual cafe play is, oh man, I was doing so well. And now I just messed up. Remember guys, these are live. So while the actors didn't make any mistakes, I'm starting to make them. Okay, the next play is For Love of a Dog by Bill Robertson and Tom Sage. Would you two turn on your cameras, please? And directed by Mike Riley. Mike Riley is turning his camera on. Yay, Mike. So this play stars Mouchette Van Helsding and Nicole Moore Josephs. And without any further ado, enjoy For Love of a Dog. I can't tell my parents about us. Why not? They would never understand. They, they think it's nuts. Maybe you don't give them enough credit. You know, to be honest, I don't think this is working anymore. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, us. You make me feel like I, I, you expect me to do all the heavy lifting in this relationship. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's not true. I'm there when you need me. Well, you wouldn't know it. That's not, that's not fair. What are you writing? A to-do list. <clears throat> While we're having a conversation? I can do two things at the same time. Well, that's an understatement. But still, I feel you're not listening to me. I'm always listening to you. I wish this pen would work. Oh, there it goes. You know, you're the one that wanted to do things on your own and I let you. <laughs> and now you want to make me feel bad about it. When I got in trouble, you could have stopped me. Do you hear yourself? Are you a child? I could have stopped you. I, <laughs> I don't uh, fix all your problems. I thought you loved me. I do love you. Well, I don't see it. Well, you're not looking. I don't want you to be with me because you're afraid of being alone. I, maybe it's true. As I'm getting older, I worry about being alone, but I just want to make sure you're with me till the end. But you, you never seem to, to you show that anything affects you. And you don't know me at all. And that really hurts. I just, I don't let myself get crazy. You know, I, I don't let myself get worked up the way you do. Oh, you mean should be like my dog? Yes, <gasps> take a lesson from your dog. <laughs> oh wait, I, and dog spells backwards. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, what? Okay. Cute. Just like your dog is cute to you, you'll always be cute to me. I, I just, I don't let everything get to me. If I did, I, I wouldn't be able to get anything done. Well, are you finished? Yes, I'm finished. Okay, I can't wait to hear what's on this to-do list. Well, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about you and your fears. Oh, oh, oh my fears. Uh, well, you know me very well. I am afraid of everything. I'm afraid of living. I'm afraid of dying. Uh, I'm afraid of my rent going up. Uh, I'm afraid of uh, my car running out of gas. I'm afraid of COVID. Uh, oh, and I'm afraid of the vaccine. Uh, I'm afraid of those five pounds. 25 pounds coming back, you know, a shorter list would be what I'm not afraid of. Okay, what's on that one? What's on that list? Nothing. <laughs> oh, so it sounds like you're human. Oh, I try to be. You make me laugh. That's one of the things I love about you. The 
don't take yourself so seriously. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Please don't give up on me. You definitely don't have to be afraid of that. You're a part of me. Well, I admit that sounds reassuring. I just, <laughs> I just have to remember it. Well, that's why we talk. Yeah, I would miss our talks. So would I. Okay, okay, so now we've talked about my list. So let's talk about your to-do list. Oh, well, I can cross two things off my list right now. <sighs> Let Michette know she's loved. Done. Rush Limbaugh, done. Yeah, why did that take so long? You know, he really wanted that whole Medal of Honor thing, so I let him have it, but that motherfucker had to go. And I'm, I'm vengeful, as you know. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Nobody's <Yes>. perfect. <laughs> so you went Old Testament on him. Well, that's what he understood, so that's what I gave him. Well, thank you, God. You're welcome, Mouchette. Would you like to know what else is on my list? I can't wait. I'm just glad we're still together. I would never quit you. Unless, of course, you started worshiping false idols. Then it's a whole nother story. Oh, God. oh. <laughs> oh me. <laughs> still working on that vengeance thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I keep working on that. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. You wanna know what else is on my list? Sure. To let you know how much I love you. Uh-huh. I'm gonna tell you the meaning of life. Just you. Oh my God. Yeah. And it can be summed up in one word. <laughs> You're gonna love it. Shit, my coffee, fuck. What, what, what happened? God, um, I drink tea. All right, and that was For Love of a Dog, written by Tom Sage and Bill Robertson, directed by Mike Riley, starring Nicole Moore Joseph and Mouchette Van Helsdinging. And the final play of the night is. I Can't Quit You, Babe, Never Gonna Let You Snow. Written by Ed Horowitz, come on to the screen. And directed by Jack Mendoza. Thank you too for working on this. And this play stars Damien Anastasio and Paul Shackman. And without further ado, ado, Can't Quit You, Babe, and never gonna let you snow. Clem? Clem, are you there, Clem? Uh, are you reading me okay? Oh, fuck. Clem, are you all right? What happened? Oh, you turn this video thing on here. Hey, hold on. Let me turn this off. God damn this weather. Fuck Greg Abbott. Fuck Ted Cruz. Fuck global warming. And fuck those Jews with those alien space lasers. Glenn, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. What in God's name are you doing? Oh, my generator ran out of gas. I got no power and no heat. Well, if we got no power, how are we talking? Well, I hooked my bike up. It's my generator now. <laughs> if I stop pedaling, Go I got nothing. Well, good luck with that. Hey, how come you got power? Uh, it's my new uh, F-150, it acts as a generator. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Told you not to get one of those Jap hybrids. I was trying to be environmental. Yeah. Looks like you're the one whose nips are freezing now. Well, looks like you got power. I'm coming over. Oh, the hell you are. 
Oh, Clem. Oh, no, Buford, you can't come over here. No, it's Marge. Uh, she says she's got the COVID. Oh, but Marge had the corona weeks ago. You've already had it. So well, that, that doesn't mean you can't get it again. Oh, you said it was a hoax. It is. But it's still out there. Come on, Clem. I, I can't pedal forever. Cut boy some slack. Well, you know, I wish I could, but I am out of here. Got a text from Heidi. She leaked those emails. So Ted had to come back early. So your boy is off to Cancun. Dude, you dude, you can't go to Mexico. I'm gonna freeze to death. Hey, that ain't my fault. No, no, no. That's California with their hippie, their green energy, their spotted owls, and their woo-woo solar cane magic. Spotted owls, but they're from Oregon. And solar cane, that's that's for sunburns. It is the same damn thing. What the hell is a wind farm, huh? Wind is not cattle. You cannot harness the wind. What does that even mean? What the, you tell me, what the hell the, the, does that mean? You cannot yoke something that, unless you can ride it. Clem, I don't think you grasp the full meaning of what global warming is. Oh, no, no, don't you Americate. Do not Americate me. Do not, do not tell me what I don't know. Be, hey. You keep peddling. You keep, there you go. I get my news. I get my Fox. I get my parlor. I get my, my, my OAN. No, no, no. This is the, the liberal left with their cancel culture, their kumbaya, their, their LGBLT, their, their AOC. No, this is the mainstream media telling their lies, trying to destroy our lives. And now they figured out how to do it with the weather. But that's global warming. It is just more of the same. No, no, no. This started in California with, with them fires. And you know those people deserve that, right? And then they shut down Disneyland from a virus that doesn't even exist. No, sir, that is not it. Not it. Clem, you can't blame the weather. It's our fault. It is not our fault. We are Texans. Uh, the exact same thing happened in 2011. It's the same thing. Ergot just didn't, they weren't ready. They had no plan. That is not what Cruz and Abbott say. Our Cruz and Abbott are idiots. They just want to be held accountable. Hmm. Who, who the hell does? Look, it ain't green energy. That ain't the problem. It's, it's coal and natural gas. I mean, that's why we got this global warming in the first place. Well, I guess then we're all screwed, aren't we? Eh, the problem is trying to go it alone. And yeah, lone star state of mind, right? My ass. What we need are leaders to tell us the truth that we can't just step away from the country. We, we we're in this together. We got to stick together. Stick together. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Marge didn't leave you. <laughs> wait, wait. Mar Marge left? Yeah. When? In the middle of the night, I woke up shivering and she was gone. Oh, that don't mean she gone, gone. She left me a note. Oh, uh, she gone. I shouldn't be surprised though. She's been threatened for years. She ran off with the guy who sold me my new truck. He's got a whole fleet. Is that why you're going to Cancun? Buford, you are a stupid sack of shit. You know that? You really think I'm going to Cancun with Heidi Cruz? I don't know. She looked kind of nice in those bikini pics on the TMZ. She is a senator's wife. She would sooner spend the night with roadkill than with a bum like me. Oh, Clem, you ain't a bum. I ain't got no job. Well, you got a truck. That I do. Damn straight. 
I'm coming over. No, no, you ain't not coming over. You got a generator. How are you coming over if you don't have a car? Oh yeah, you can pick me up. I've been running my engine for two days. I do not have the gas. I only live a couple miles away. It won't take much. How much you got? I don't know. I, I, I'm like my quarter tank. Well, just that's perfect. I don't need much more than that. Just go check. I am not going outside just to check my fuel gauge. It's not going to kill you. Go check. It's freezing out there. You're not going to die. Just check. Oh, well, I, I could slip and, and, and I could die that way. I don't give a shit. Just go check. All right. All right. You hold your horses. Fine. That's what you want. You just sit right there, you bald mother. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go check right now. You just keep your pedaling. You keep pedaling and I'm gonna check it. God damn it. Just go check, I'm getting saddle sore. Oh, 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 oh. Clem. Clem, are you okay? Clem, what happened? Clem, are you there? Clem? Clem, if you, if you can hear me say something. Buford. Buford. Did you stop peddling, you quitter? Oh, fuck this shit, I'm going to Cali. All right. That was I, oh, I screwed that up again. That was Can't Quit You Babe, Never Gonna Let You Snow, written by Ed Horowitz. Directed by Jack Mendoza and starring Paul Shackman and Damien Anastasio. Now we have a virtual curtain call. Everybody turn your cameras on. Thank you all for joining us this evening for the February virtual LA Cafe Plays. We're giving you all a round of applause. The theme was, I can't quit you, babe. And now you guys can all go and have a beautiful Sunday evening and do whatever it is you do. While we all have virtual drinks, like we're on the patio of the Ruskin. All right, everybody. Thank you. And I'm ending this. And...